Hey everyone, and welcome to the next video in the Azure Communication Services email video series. In this video, we'll talk about different types of analytics and telemetry you can get from logs in the Azure portal, including all the prerequisite steps you need to set it up. Now, this tutorial assumes that you already have an email service up and running with emails being sent from it. Because this video is part of our email series, we'll be focusing on email logs, but if you just wanted to learn about logs in the Azure portal in general, and you stumbled across this video, Stick with us because it's a very similar process and you'll still learn how to do that. Let's jump in. Here I'm in the Azure portal. You can see I already have some resources created, but before I can go ahead and get information and data from logs, I need to set up two small prerequisite steps. First, I need somewhere for that data of the logs to live, which is gonna be an adult log analytics workspace. And then second, I need to configure my communication service to send that information on logs to the workspace. So let's go ahead and go over how to create a log analytics workspace. I'm gonna create a resource. I'm going to search for log analytics and then pull up the log analytics workspace. Once I see it here, I'll click create the log analytics workspace. And what we're creating here is essentially the data store where our log data is going to live. To set it up, just make sure that your subscription and resource group are what you want. You can name it whatever you like. I would just name it demo. And then you would click review and create. Clicking this is going to deploy your log analytics workspace and have it ready to go so that you can pipe data into it. Let's go back home. We'll discard this. And now let's go into our communication service itself and we'll configure it so that we know where the, so the log data has a place to go. We'll go into our communication service. And the second prerequisite step, like we said, is making sure that our communication service knows where to send the log data. So under the monitoring tab, look for diagnostic settings. And this is how you can configure where the streaming of the export log data goes to. So click add diagnostic setting. You can see I already have one, but if we want it, we click add diagnostic setting, name it whatever you like. I'm gonna search for the email categories. So in this case, I want uh, send mail logs, uh, delivery status update, and user engagement logs. The next thing would be, where do you want this log data to go? Well, we just set up a log analytics workspace, so we were gonna, we'd, we'd choose that. And then just make sure that it is the log analytics workspace that you created. And once you click save, this connection is good to go. Your communication service will be able to send log data to the log analytics workspace that you have chosen. You can also do a few other things, but for the purpose of this demo, we'll just stick with a log analytics workspace. Let's go back to our communication service. I'll discard this because I already have one created. And with this set up, the very first thing you can do is get some high level information about your communication service. So if you look under the monitoring tab again, under for the insights button, this pulls up high level overview information for our communication service. In this video, I'm only so focused on email, so I'll click the email button. And this gives us, like I said, a high level overview of how many emails were delivered, failed, suppressed, um, over a specific time frame. I could filter this by the different mail from addresses as part of my domain, or I can keep it holistic. If I scroll down, I'll just see a little bit more information on how many emails were viewed and clicked. I'll scroll back up. And if I want email performance, I'll click this tab. And again, we're getting that high level overview of how many were delivered, how many were failed, how many failed. I can see my error summary, which shows me how many failed and suppressed. And at the very bottom, I see this tabular view, which again gives us an overview of how many emails were successful, how many had an error. Now, this view is nice, but if I wanted a more granular look or more control over what information was displayed, and that's where you're gonna to wanna to look into logs. So let's come back again under the monitoring tab and now we're gonna look for logs and click this, which is going to pull up the queries hub or the log portal. Now a quick and easy way you can get started is with these example queries that come out of the box. In this case, I wanna search for ones related to email and we have four sample queries that we can run to get us started. Let's say we want emails that were bounced and suppressed. So these are gonna be you know, emails that failed in some way. So let's click run. And this is automatically going to kick off that query for us. So you can see that in the last 24 hours, I have one email that was suppressed. 
Let's say we wanna expand this query. I'm gonna go out of simple mode and change it to KQL mode, which is Custo Query Language. And this is the exact query that yielded these log results, in this case, only this one. Now let's expand this search and say, I also wanna know whether delivery status equaled failed. So by doing this, we are now expanding our search to include more, op more options. I'll click run again, and now we see that we have four logs that meet this criteria from this query. I'll scroll over and we can see that we have different delivery status. Now we have failed. Uh, if I keep scrolling over, we can see that we have a failure reason and a failure message. And if I were to unfurl this one and scroll down, I can get more information about the failure reason and I'll get a failure message. This is something that can help you debug and figure out what went wrong with your communication service. For example, if you're sending an email campaign out and you're worried about sender reputation, these are errors that you'll definitely wanna know and be able to track and take action on. Let's now create a new query. Let's say we wanna know which emails were engaged with, which ones had views or were opened and clicked. And we can do that by starting a new query, clicking the plus button. I'm actually gonna search from a new table in this one. I'm going to search again for email because that's what we're focused on. And I'm gonna look under this user engagement table. So if I click run here, this is going to return logs for emails that were clicked and viewed. You can see in the last 24 hours, we have 19 emails that have some sort of engagement type. And I'll scroll over so we can see what the engagement types were. And if it was a click, we can actually see exactly which link, or in this case, engagement context, exactly which link was clicked. Again, super helpful if you're running an email campaign and you have multiple links or CTAs in the email, being able to determine which links were clicked is gonna be very valuable information. You might notice a few logs have the same correlation ID. This means they are all, all related to the same email. And if I wanted to get information specific to this correlation ID, so this email, I'm gonna go ahead and make another custom query. So I'll enter KQL mode. And instead of returning everything on this table, I'm going to say where the correlation ID is equal to this value, this correlation ID that we just copied. And I'll click run. And this is going to give me all of the logs that correspond with this correlation ID. In this case, we have four. And that tells us that for this email, we have, it was viewed twice, and it had two clicks, one for each link in there. So this is obviously a very basic use case. If you're sending thousands of emails and you wanna hone in depending on certain criteria, you can customize the query search further for insights and info that's relevant to you. Log analytics with the power of KQL offer this easy and powerful way to get insights from your logs. You can also share or export any of the information from the Query Hub. So if you click this share button, you can copy a link to a query to share with a colleague, or you can just copy the results as is. And then you have multiple export options. So you can export the CSV, you can export these to a Power BI dashboard, or you can just open it in Excel to do your own further insights that way. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to get started with logs and custom queries in the Azure portal. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.